Chest day, got a good workout for us today, and we're gonna really zero in on some mind-muscle connection for targeting different areas of the chest. So we're gonna start off right out of the gate with a movement using resistance bands. You can call this a warm-up if you want, but this is more of a mind-muscle connection drill. So if I were to say to you, let's work upper chest, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, of course, that's going to be any of our incline movements. We'd get an incline bench just like this one right here. And we would either do a bar press or a dumbbell press or maybe even an incline machine press. But here's what I want you to feel. Anchor a band. It doesn't have to be heavy. And I want you to step far enough away from your anchor point to get some tension here. I want you to press up at this angle here to mimic an incline press and then take your other hand here and start feeling around to feel that contraction. Now let me ask you, do you feel a super strong contraction in your upper chest when you do this? Because I don't know about you, but for me, I feel this all in my anterior delt. I feel a very strong contraction there. And it's easy in an incline press to use a lot of anterior delt or the front of the shoulder as well as triceps. So, through the years, I learned that just going from flat bench to an incline bench or even doing a decline bench really doesn't work my chest the way that I like to work it. So what I found is that it's more of an outside to inside approach. And a lot of people will say, yeah, but the muscle fibers just run across the muscle and you can't just contract one section of the muscle. But you got to remember the shape of our chest. Everything comes into the humerus here in our arm. So Everything, it's almost like a triangle if you were to look at the shape of the muscle. And so all those muscle fibers are running in different directions. And so what I found over time that what works for me, certain movements I feel a little bit more towards the outside. And this is a feeling thing and that's what we have to tune into is how does it feel? Because I can explain it to you till I'm blue in the face. We could read textbooks about the right way to do it. But at the end of the day, it's a feel thing and you got to zero in on that. So. We're gonna be doing some things that we feel more on the outside of the chest and also the upper chest and things that we feel more towards the middle or the inside of the chest or even the lower portion of the chest. So let's kind of erase everything that we think that we know about chest. Let's clear our mind of flat bench versus incline and let's, like I said, zero in on how we feel. So let's take this drill to the next step. With that in mind, why don't you back up a little so I can face you. So let's take that elbow out nice and wide, step away from our anchor point to create tension. And automatically you should feel this right up here, upper portion of the chest, also on the outside. So anytime we really flare our elbows out wide, we are getting a maximum stretch in the muscle here. And so that's really what we're gonna focus on is when do we get a stretch in the muscle? In which phase of the motion do we get a peak contraction where the muscle fully shortens all the way? So with elbows out wide, we're really stretching the muscle and that's when we're gonna feel it more towards the outside. They call that the lateral portion of the muscle versus the inside, they call this the medial portion where you feel it more as we start to cross the midline of the body. So again, let's go back to this. Elbow out wide, feel that stretch here, and we can press straight out. We don't even have to get this crazy range of motion where we're trying to squeeze to the middle, just right in this pocket. Right here, should feel it all towards the outside of the muscle. Now, if I angle my body just a little bit, and I squeeze across my body, across the midline, now all of a sudden you feel everything shift here more to the middle or to the inside of our chest. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on is combinations of things with our elbows a little bit wider, getting a little bit of a stretch there in the muscle and things where we're focusing more on crossing the midline of the body. So with that said, we're gonna drag out the bench. And I definitely invite you to take that band and just mess around with it because the cool thing is Doing one arm at a time, you can start to feel around and like I said, it helps you zero in on that mind-muscle connection. And without pressing a bunch of weight, you're not worried about, you know, how much weight am I moving? You're just worried about zeroing in on that feeling. 
All right. So just because I said, don't worry about incline or flat bench, we are still going to utilize that. Doing a slight incline definitely does help target a little bit more of the upper chest. But my personal opinion through the years is that most of your chest presses do work the muscle fairly uniformly. So it's not like you're just able to zero in on upper chest versus, you know, the lower portion of your chest. You're working the whole thing. So we're going to do a very slight incline here. See how much weight we want to use. Why don't we go heavy with this? Because when we flare our elbows out wide, which is what we're going to do, and we're going to focus on getting that good stretch, we have to use more control because we are at a greater risk of injury anytime we stretch a muscle. It's the same thing like with biceps. We're very prone to tearing the tendon when our arm is fully extended, when that muscle is fully stretched. So same thing here. When we we're getting that nice stretch, we want to do it with control. We want to do it nice and smooth as we transition from that eccentric into that concentric push. So can't be jerky about this. So we got to use a weight that we can control. And also bringing our elbows out wider like that is not as strong of a position as opposed to keeping our elbows a little closer to our body. Look at the difference in technique with a bench press with a power lifter versus a bodybuilder. There's a difference between being in a strong position to move a lot of weight and being in a position to maybe make that muscle work a little harder. So even right here, I feel a really nice stretch there in the chest and I'm going to press straight up. I'm not even really worried about crossing the midline of the body, trying to squeeze these dumbbells together because it's not really a great movement for getting that strong contraction there in the middle of the chest. And I'll show you what I mean when we're done with this set. So smooth transition, straight back up. Good stretch at the bottom, nice and smooth. Nothing jerky. So you should feel these more toward the outside of the chest and even in the upper portion of the chest. But the key is going to be that light stretch at the bottom. Get one more going. So you're hearing a lot more about it now than you used to. About getting a really strong contraction on a slightly stretched muscle. And this really just goes back to this idea of what's called length tension relationship in a muscle. And you can look it up for more information. But we don't want to overcomplicate this. But the simple concept is when a muscle has a little bit of tension on it, you can get a much stronger contraction versus a muscle being in a more relaxed or shortened state. It's harder to get that same kind of strong contraction. So that's why with this movement, really just focusing on this part of the movement. And like I said, here in the middle, once we get here, there's really no resistance here. Our plane of resistance with gravity is straight up and down. So once we get to here, this is kind of easy, there's, there's nothing there. That's where we would use either bands or cables, anything where we can change the direction of that resistance from outside toward, toward our midline. So let's get a light stretch. The biggest thing with this stuff is not to Get overwhelmed with all the information out there. Everyone's got an opinion about this shit. And the problem is there's so many different opinions. They're so varying. It's just like information overload. So the best thing in my opinion 
just get in there and try things. You know, don't take anyone's word for it, don't take my word for it, but go in, try different things, have an open mind, and start to learn to feel this shit. Because in my opinion, this style of training is a feel thing. It's not just a technique thing. You know, and you might find little variations in the movement where you feel it more. And that's what you have to learn. All right. So again, elbows out a little bit wider. Let's control that rep speed. Nice control the eccentric, light stretch, smooth transition to that concentric press. And here I feel it in my chest as opposed to my anterior delts fading first. feels great and also by going wide not only do we feel a nice stretch in the chest but when we go wide and we press straight up we don't have as much movement at the elbow which means we're using a little bit less triceps so the more movement at the elbow the more you're definitely going to be using triceps think about like a diamond push-up Look how much movement is happening there at the elbow. That's why it's a great triceps movement, even though it's a push-up. It's my water bottle. I've always said, I have an appreciation for the latest science and research, but it's easy to over-science things. At the end of the day, so no substitute for good old fashioned experience, getting in there, trying things and learning how it feels. But you have to be a student of the game. Just don't go in there and blindly do stuff. Just going through the motions, doing it the way someone told you to do it. If you don't feel it the way they explained it, well then you're gonna have to try different things. And sometimes the changes are small. But that's the fun of it in my opinion. That's part of the journey. You know, there is a learning curve and instead of being frustrated by it, embrace it, enjoy it. It's part of the challenge. If everything was fucking easy, then it wouldn't be fun. It's like I used to tell my kids about playing games. You know, if we played cards, it didn't matter. Even if it was Uno, I was never going to just let them win. And they would get frustrated with me and I would tell them, I'm like, but if you knew that I let you win... Would you enjoy it? Would you enjoy the victory? Would it feel good? And the answer is no. So it's kind of the same thing with this. If the results just came super easy, everything about it was easy, would it feel like a victory? Would it feel like a win? I don't think so. As the saying goes, it's the journey, not the destination. And you notice I never drop the weights, and it's not just because dropping the weights is obnoxious. It's that when you drop them, you're putting your arm and your shoulder in a really awkward position. It's really easy 
to injure yourself doing it. You know, to me, everything is kind of this pursuit of control, not just in the lift itself, but everything about the lift, the setup, the takedown, never sloppy. All right. Is that two or three? That was three. Well, that was quick. All right. So that felt good. So I felt that not only toward the outside here, but across the upper chest. So now we're going to focus on coming toward the middle, and we're going to do a little bit of an extreme version of this. We're going to do an isolation exercise. Now remember, kind of like Refresher 101 for some of my beginners, definition of a compound movement is multi-joint. So that's going to be shoulder and elbow with our presses. So in an isolation movement for the chest, we're going to eliminate the elbow and everything then becomes just about movement at the shoulder. And that is bringing our arm toward the midline of our body. So if we were doing a pec deck, the farthest we can go is right here. If we're locked into a bar, farthest we can come across our body is here. So if we really want to maximize that contraction, get a really strong contraction and shorten that muscle as much as possible, then we want to maximize that range of motion. And that means trying to bring our arm as far across our body as possible. And that's where I started doing this exercise years ago. Too many years ago, probably 10 years ago at least. I started doing it with the cable machine. Matter of fact, I can show you both. I like to come up to right about chest height with it. I'm not sure how much weight is on here. Doesn't take much. This is a movement that focuses on technique, not just trying to move heavy weight. So the movement is trying to keep that elbow in one fixed position for the most part. We don't need to get a lot of movement there. And it's just bringing that arm across the body. So it's keeping this close to my chest. If you were to come over here, you have to navigate around the benches. Look how close my hand is to my chest the whole time. I'm not out here, right here. And I'm trying to get, for a finishing position, my elbow as close to my midline as I can. Uh, and I feel an insane contraction right here, more towards the inside of the chest. So we do that exact same thing with the bands. Anchor them at about the same height. Actually, let me get this cable machine out of the way so I can put it there at that same height. It's the same exact thing. Step away so you get tension here at the beginning of the movement. If I start here, there's no tension, right? When I hear people say, oh, there's no tension in the beginning of a movement with bands. Well, no shit when you do it like that. All right, so press all the way across. I want you to get that strong isometric contraction. So controlled concentric, push, 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 squeeze, then control that eccentric. And keep that other hand here on the chest so you can feel this. nine ten it's one of my favorite chest exercises eleven <sighs> there's something about the movement where I get as much stronger contraction even than I do with any kind of fly whether it's dumbbell flies or cable flies I can tell you where it actually started. Started off sitting on a regular chest press like a hammer strength machine and then turning my body sideways 
in it and pressing across. That's where it started. And then he evolved to the cables and then eventually doing the same with the bands. If you never tried it with bands though, I highly recommend it. It's got its own feeling to it. It's a super strong contraction just because you have a little more freedom of movement. It allows you to get that extra squeeze at the end. Let me do one more. <sighs> Don't try to go too heavy with these. It completely takes away the feeling. And then pretty soon you're just struggling to, you know, get the movement and you just won't feel that same kind of strong contraction. So if you're going to err on one side or the other, start off going a little bit lighter and then to make it harder, slow down that rep speed, maximize that range of motion, maximize that isometric squeeze and just get a feel for it. And once you do, and you know what that strong contraction feels like, then you can chase that with heavier resistance. But if you do it the other way, and you start really heavy, it's gonna be a lot harder process trying to really zero in on that right feeling. A lot of times I tell people, try dropping down a little bit just for that simple fact. You know, feel what a really good strong contraction feels like really good burn in the muscle. And then once you have that dialed in, then the goal is to go up in resistance, to do as much resistance as you can or use as much resistance as you can while still getting that exact same feeling. And once you lose that feeling, your technique maybe starts to get sloppy or you're just worried about you know getting the full rep and you lose that feeling, that's when you know it's time to dial it back just a little bit. And so that's why I say, you know, don't train just by reps. It's not just a pure mechanics thing. It's a feel thing. Got to learn to feel. All right. I'm going to actually go up in resistance a little. But if I lose that feeling, then, hey, got to... Practice what I preach, right? This might be a little too much. Let's see. Ah, it feels good. Switch it up. Nice. 
Whew. So we got one more set of these and we're gonna transition into a dumbbell press that's kind of the opposite of what we were doing before. We were going out high and wide. So now we wanna focus on how do we get that good squeeze in the middle. So after the set, I'll show you what I like. Here's another thing to keep in mind with chest. You see someone with a huge upper chest. Some guys even kind of get the split there between the two different muscle bellies. A lot of that's just genetics. You know, sometimes it's not even the exercise they're doing. You see them doing a ton of incline. It's easy to think, okay, well, they got that chest because of all the exercise that they're doing. Reality is that person could probably build that same chest with a completely different set of exercises. And then you got the person on the other end of the spectrum like me, it doesn't matter what I do for upper chest, I'm never gonna get that super big upper chest like a bookshelf where you could like set a cup of coffee up there. Didn't matter what I did. So we're all built a little bit different. We all have strong body parts, weak body parts. You look at like Arnold and even Franco Colombo, it's easy to look at them and say, okay, they're training partners, they train the same way, and they both have very similar style chess. Maybe that's, who knows, maybe that was one of the reasons they like training together is they both kind of had the same type of strengths. I don't know, but had less to do with the way they train, more to do with just some of their genetic potential. All right, here we go. Let's switch places with you. Did mention this uh, one of the other workouts. If you're doing these, you can if you want use Fat Grips or one of the generic brands like I've got here. So you've got a handle. You know, if the band is uncomfortable in your hand, I used to use gloves because the band can tear up your hands. I went whatever it was, almost 30 years of training with weights and got used to all the knurling and on a bar and so I had calluses up the wazoo, but there's something different about bands. You know, that latex will take the skin off. One of the things that I think is cool about bands, so I'm on my feet and all this resistance here in the horizontal plane, I'm having to stabilize myself with my legs, my core here. My phone's ringing, let me put that on pause. So I'm having to create this very strong base and so there's a functional strength aspect to this. I always used to say, all right, so let's say you take a football player and maybe he goes into the weight room and he can bench press 500 pounds, but that's also laying on the bench stabilized. What happens when you put that person on their feet? You're only as strong as your weakest link. And so if the weak link is somewhere in here, core strength, you know, lower body stability, then that's a limiting factor. So you get a different kind of strength when you're training on your feet. So you notice how wide my stance is and I'm contracting everything in here. People always ask me, out of the four and a half years that I did bands only without any weight training, you know, what were the things that I noticed 
What are the things I liked? What are the things I missed? I can tell you one of the secondary benefits, which actually, you know, for some people might even be a primary benefit, is that my core got so strong. You know, I was always working abs, low back, everything that all the low back issues that I have were starting to go away. One, I wasn't doing a lot of awkward movements like, you know, heavy bar squats or deadlifts. But like I said, a lot of that strengthening in the core from exercises like this, I think definitely had a, a benefit to it. <sighs> okay, so that was our second exercise. So now we're still gonna focus more on middle chest. We wanna get that squeeze. So we wanna be more here in the middle of our body. So when we were focusing on outside, elbows were wide. Well, one of the challenges when we bring elbows in close, is like I talked about with the diamond push-up, now we have a tendency to use a lot of triceps, but there is a way around this, and we did this the other day. Let me flatten this out. And that is by taking those dumbbells and squeezing them together. So we don't even have to come super low because we're not trying to get that stretch here at the bottom we were getting that with our elbows out wide. So here we're trying to focus on that squeeze in the middle. So even though our hands are close together, by squeezing the dumbbells together, we're getting that nice strong contraction, almost like you would if you were doing a fly. So, This might be a little too light, but we'll see. If anything, I'll just go higher with the reps. <clears throat> yeah, it's way too light. But I'm not just touching the dumbbells and being passive about this. I'm trying to squeeze them together as hard as I can, almost as if I was trying to crush them against each other all the way through the range of motion. So squeezing, 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 stop. Squeeze back to the middle, squeeze, 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 squeeze. All the way through, the whole time. Imagine almost like there's a tennis ball between the two and you're trying to hold it there by squeezing the dumbbells together. So I'll show you another variation, different hand position here on the next set. But the challenge in doing that movement isn't in the weight from the dumbbells of pressing up and down. Like I said, it's in squeezing them together. So this next set, I'm gonna change the angle a little bit. It's gonna make it easier for us to keep our elbows a little closer to our body. It's gonna change the feel of it. So instead of end to end, almost like thumbs pointing toward it, each other, we're gonna press the dumbbells together this way. And now, elbows are staying a little tighter here, but we don't wanna make it this movement, right? This is all triceps. See how the elbows dip down and then back up. It's like that. It's almost like if we were to do a reverse fly, just like that. Let's get a light stretch. You know, I think out of all things that I like with training, obviously besides getting results, that's everyone's favorite. But little discoveries. When you try movement, you're like, yeah, I don't know, I don't really feel it. And then all of a sudden you just make one little change and you just have that great set. And you just feel that muscle burning, super strong contraction, almost like that 
muscle is just balling up. It's knotting up and you're like, oh, okay. Like those little discoveries are fun. And that's where you have to be patient. Because if you try this and you don't feel it right away, that's okay. Like I said, keep making small adjustments. It's a process of discovery. Hmm. Hmm. So that's the uh, peach mango with the Maverick multi -V. So it comes in this variety pack of peach mango and lemon lime. It's funny because half the people really love the lemon lime and like the peach mango, and the other half it's the opposite. And I think I'm kind of one of those people, I'm like 50-50, I like them both the same. But then again, I made the product, so I guess I should. That was my obligatory product plug for the video. I'm gonna link the product down below. All right, so let's do the second variation of the movement, which by the way, with heavier dumbbells, don't do what I just did. Don't just reach down and sling them up on your legs. It's better just to pick them up off the floor, use your legs. Sometimes we all get lazy. All right, so instead of here, we're gonna come here. Same thing, I want you to think about squeezing those hands closer toward each other. Oh yeah. Ooh, that feels good right there at the top. Squeeze them together the whole time, as hard as you can. It's nine. So I think I like these, this variation better for that squeeze in the middle. The other variation was almost like a happy medium between these out here versus this. So one, really feel it out here. The second version felt kind of, you know, more evenly distributed. This one, I feel it much more closer to the inside. Nice. Stretch it out real quick. And you notice I'm not moving heavy weight. You really don't have to. The visualization here would be if we were to take this to a bodybuilding stage, you would see a bodybuilder, anytime they try to hit a chest pose, they're always squeezing their hands together, whether it's here, some guys used to do this one right here, but they're pressing toward the inside and that's where they're getting that really strong contraction. So that's what we're doing with this. It's the same thing I tell you to visualize when you're doing a push up. Just don't think about pushing straight up as you push. Imagine if you were trying to squeeze your hands closer together. Obviously you can't, they're locked into the floor, but pretend you're trying to. Pretend you're almost trying to crinkle the floor up in between your hands like it was a piece of paper. All right, last side of these.
and I'm doing it again, being lazy. I should be coming over here and picking them up. All right, here we go. Good stuff. <sighs> Definitely feeling those. I feel like the muscle has worked thoroughly, top to bottom, inside to outside. And that should be your goal. You want even, well-balanced development? Well, at the end of your workout, you should feel like you work that muscle thoroughly. My thought process has definitely changed over time, but I can tell you the beginning of the evolution was early in my training, everything was bar work. Bench press is the king of all chest building exercises. Not really. Not really. It's great for this portion of the movement. You really do feel it out here on the outer portion of the chest. So it's an effective exercise. It's not the king because you don't get anything here in the midline. So that's where traditionally you'd see people do flat bench and mix it up with dumbbell flies or cable flies, etc. So you need to hit that muscle from different angles if you really want to get that even development. So we're gonna do some banded push-ups here. Some banded push-ups and then mix those in with abs. So we got abs today as well. So we're gonna use our crunches as our rest period for our push-ups. So this should give us a good little pump, finish off the workout strong, burn some extra calories as well. So when we're doing these, I want you to think about what I was saying before. Don't just press these. Think about, imagine you're trying to squeeze to the middle to get that really strong contraction all the way through. So we'll do as many push-ups as we can. Try to shoot for at least 10. If you can't do 10 straight ones, no problem. Do five, shake it off for a couple seconds, do a couple more, shake it off, do a couple more, whatever it takes, but do at least 10. If you can do more than 10, then we wanna to go to failure. Whether that's 20, that's 30, whatever it is. And trust me, when we get to set two and three, we won't be, doing that many. All right, here we go. A little wider than the shoulder width, chin up, chest out, all the way to the floor. Control that rep speed. It's not quantity. I don't care how many you can do really. I care about quality. I care about you getting that mind muscle connection, getting that squeeze. Every rep which is gonna make it a whole lot harder. You're gonna use a lot more energy, so you will not be able to do as many reps. But who cares, there's no fucking trophy for how many push-ups you can do. Well, maybe there is somewhere. Not here. Oh, 
tight. It's just like those presses. It doesn't take a lot of resistance to burn out if you're squeezing together. Same thing here. We'll do some crunches. Nice and controlled. Draw on the way down, stop short, don't rest at the bottom. Back to our push ups. Now, if you're thinking or even tempted to think, is that all we're doing for chest? Remember, you don't need to go in there and destroy yourself. The key is stimulating the muscle, not annihilating it. but you still have to train with the right amount of intensity. Make every one of those sets count. Make every one of those reps count. And when you do that, you don't have to do a million exercises. There's a reason why Dorian Yates or Mike Menser were able to go in and get great results with fewer exercises, fewer sets. Squeeze to the middle, every rep. Nice. Back to the crunches. We got one more set of each. You'll notice with my workouts, keep the rest period short. Try to keep them 90 seconds, long enough to grab a drink of water, stretch, and get it set up for the next exercise. And that's what keeps your workouts, you know, more around that hour mark. When I was young, I used to think I needed to train for two hours, two and a half hours. First of all, now I don't have two and a half hours to fuck around working out. I got too much other shit to do. And two, I know it's not necessary. It's not even productive. If you're working out for two and a half hours, you're dicking off way too much. So I'm going to do this rep. Uh, the, I thought I was going to say a couple more, but it turned out to be that one. Drop the band. Uh, finish up. Wow. Whew. All right. 
Oh, shit. Can't cheat ourselves. Got one last set of crunches. That's it, man. That's a solid chest workout. Like I said, working it all the way around. It's a good one. Got hard at the end there. So that's a wrap for today. So I'll see you next workout. We're gonna be doing back and biceps tomorrow.